Cody. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to show up for this podcast. You know, do I want to put hat forward? Do I want to have it back? Do I want to put it to the side? I don't know. Like, what version of Brian are people getting today? But uh, what's up, guys? If you haven't already checked out my previous episode a year ago, uh, my name is Brian Lubin. My elevator pitch um, for anybody that is unlucky enough to get this actually in an elevator would be, uh, what's up? I went and did the traditional corporate sales thing, you know, where I, I graduated college, went to corporate, made it to the top of the company, got everything I ever wanted, realized I didn't want any of it, uh, won all the awards, and then started investing in real estate. Uh, built up my own little podcast business that was able to re replace a uh, $250,000 a year corporate job. In March 2022, I was able to leave that job and hit, quote unquote, financial freedom, which is what we all talk about in the topic of this podcast. Then did the next logical best thing, hopped on a one-way flight, traveled full-time around the world for eight months, and then uh, went on a journey of self-discovery to figure out what the heck business and impact I wanted to do in the rest of my life. And since that point, and since the airing of our podcast um, last December, I have now documented live not only my exodus from corporate America, step by step, hey, I just quit my job having podcast episodes like that, to hey, I hit millionaire status, to hey, uh, I'm starting up my own company, to now my first uh, million dollars of revenue in my new company. And now I'm building that and documenting it all the way up to $10 million a year. So if you want to quit your job, travel the world, and build a business from zero to $10 million a year, this is a good podcast for it. Perfect. All right, let's dig into catching up. Because last December, when we aired that episode, I listened back this week, and because I, I just wanted to see what we talked about, how far you had progressed with Action Academy. The pod was, you had a decent number of episodes, but you were just beginning to start the Action Academy, the core group. The, the membership, mm -hmm. the, the program where you're teaching people all this stuff. So I don't know if you can kind of just give us a timestamp back December of 2022. What was going on in your head? How things have played out? Because it has been insane to see how explosive your growth has been. Like, I wish that I could have had that explosive of a growth of growth when I was starting my entrepreneurial journey. It's insane, man. Dude, I appreciate it. Yeah. In December of last year, we had so to give you guys like the Cliff Notes version, um, so the the business started, and this is advice for everybody, you, you start a business based off of a problem, not a solution. So you start with the problem, and then you go and ask as many customers as you can that have that problem, what uh, pain points, what issues that they're running into, and then you build the solution. Too many people are starting with a solution, and then they're trying to find pro people with the problem. Um, that's backwards. And a lot of the times you'll be upset when you realize that nobody actually has the problem that you built for. Oops. <laughs> right yeah so we did so uh i was traveling around the world and i realized oh my god like a lot of people that are making six figures especially also want to quit their jobs and travel around the world and build their own business and so i did 100 free coaching calls um and then they ended up telling me i just helped them for free no offer uh and they were telling me all the things that they were running into all the roadblocks where they had lack of capital lack of ca uh lack of confidence like a community and all these different lacks that was keeping them from actually accelerating their real estate and business investing careers to leave that job in anything less than 10 years. Because buying a rental property a year doesn't work anymore with interest rates. You need to do more accelerated strategies. And so I ended up building an online course, which is the next you know, logical step in that. Sent one email to those 100 people, made $100,000 in 48 hours. Um, that was super cool. And then ended up shutting it all down because <laughs> I realized that the business model wasn't the business model that I wanted to run and it wasn't correct. So I came to the realization that uh, we were in the wrong business for us to really get people where they wanted to go. It was community, not course. So we pivoted from a paid course with a free attached community to a paid community with a free attached course. And now that 52 hour course is the 30 day onboarding. And so that's where we were when we launched in December we we're trying to figure out our identity and who we helped with what. And now fast forward to today, we've got almost 300 members um, in that community. And now we are freaking, we're running like a Ferrari, man. We've got a team of five. Uh, everything is just smooth and humming. We have SOPs, we have systems. And then now I went and I took that entire uh, $1,500 course is what I charged for it. And I condensed it all into a book. So I wrote freaking from passive to passionate. I wrote my first book. It only took me 1,137 hours this year. So we took everything that we taught for $1,500 and now we're giving it away for 14 bucks. And uh, so it's super cool, man. We sold about 2,000 copies so far. 
And uh, now I'm flying. I've got this. I'm doing here. I'm finally doing the podcast tour for it. And then I'm going to be speaking with Brandon Turner on his show here next week. And so it's been a it's been a super fun ride, man. And now, yeah, we're right at that million dollar a year mark. And then this year we're predicting five million a year. And then we're trying to shoot for the 10 that following year. So I think we're going to hit it. So I want to dig into something you mentioned just briefly at the beginning. You got 100 people to hop on a free call with you. Who are these 100 people? Yeah. So these are all people that listen to my podcast, The Action Academy. So our whole business model is like, let's just help 99% of the people for free. And then that 1%, you know, that is like ready, willing, and able to go and actually have urgency and take action. Then we'll be like, hey, we got the thing for you. So just like you, we give away all the information for free. We sell the implementation, right? So we actually hold your hand through it. So the people that are, you know, calling um, were the people that were listening to the podcast and I just released the offer on my podcast. I just said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I didn't post on social media just for the podcast audience. And I booked that out for two months. took me two months to do all those calls for free. Um, So the person that normally listened, and I'll see if I can peg people that are listening right now. If I peg you right here, uh, you have to leave Cody a five-star rating and review for his podcast here. So (laughs) I'm going to take a shot in the dark because I've done a thousand intro calls now. So here is most of the people that listen to this show and that listen to my show and that we help. So it's a person that is making $80,000 plus in their corporate job. They're a high performer. You're probably in sales, consulting, CPA, something along those lines, maybe, you know, doctor, lawyer, whatever have you. And you have invested in some real estate. So you bought a rental property or two because that's what people told you to do. You try to do the stack method. One property, then two properties, then four properties, then eight. Uh, you got to the point now where you realize, oh my God, this is only giving me like 200 to $800 a monthly cash flow. This isn't really wetting my whistle, not really lighting my candle. I need 10000 to $15,000 a month of passive income so I can quit my job, travel around the world, do whatever you want, right? And so now there's a discrepancy between where you are and where you want to be. So you want to learn multifamily, you want to learn commercial real estate, buying self-storage, mobile home parks, buying businesses, laundromats, car washes, starting your own thing. And you have no idea how to do it. Um, You don't have the community. You don't have the capital. You don't have the connections. And now you're trying to figure out what the hell, how do I figure all this out? So uh, that's the person that we normally speak to. That's the person we help. So thousand, thousand of those calls, man. And everyone runs into like the same three or four issues. Yeah. Yeah, I, I dude, that's, personally. that's insane. So with those first hundred people, the reason I'm digging in is Justin and I just recorded an episode and this is like the perfect case study. It's like give away a bunch of free samples essentially, and then you'll have people begging to come back and pay you for more. So with those yeah. hundred first free calls, what was the call to action? Did you literally just send them an email, a None. text and say, Hey, I'm launching this course. Well, I mean, you must've done something to get a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket. Yeah. I mean, so when we did it, there was no offer. Um, Okay. Yeah. An extra caveat to add to what you just said is until people are reaching out to you and asking you to help with thing, you're not quite yet ready to leave your business, leave your job for that thing. So uh, advice that we give is first, find something that you're super passionate about that you get really proficient at, document it, post it, like Cody with his with the whole Etsy you know thing. You're like, hey, this is what I'm doing. It works, and then wait to see who organically reaches out to you. And this could be with weight loss. This could be with social media. This could be with anything. Just post about what you're doing and say, hey, I'm doing thing. Check this out. And then if you do it the right way and you're consistent enough with it, then people will start reaching out and be like, hey, what you're doing is super cool. Like, can you help me with that? And then once you start having a steady inflow of those people that is when it's time to fully establish your side hustle. So please remember that. I had been documenting what I was doing for a year up to this point, and then I made an offer, which was still a free offer of doing free 15-minute coaching calls. And so by the time that that happened, I did the call. I just helped people because I know what to do because I did the thing, which is shocking in the online space, <laughs> Yeah. Um, right? And then, <laughs> and then I got good at coaching it too because of all the different pain points and different angles that I saw. And then um, that was July, August. And then October came and I had the idea for the course. I sent one email out to the 100 people. And in that email, I said, hey, I'm building this thing that will be more in depth. It's going to be like 50 hours. It's going to be everything you need. It's not done yet. I'm not even a quarter of the way through. It's going to be ready by the end of October. But do you want it? 1500 bucks? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> and then everyone's like, 
Yeah. <laughs> and they just pay me through Venmo and Cash App. That is so crazy, dude. I, I didn't have a landing page. I didn't have a Stripe link. Didn't have a business. Didn't have an LLC. Didn't have an EIN. Didn't have a bank account. I was just like, here's my Cash App. Here's my Venmo. And it was just like, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And I put them all in a Google Sheet. And then I was like, all right, here's who I'm emailing the course to when I finish it. <laughs> I'm going to have to send you the episode we recorded last week. I'm, that's why I'm cheesing harder than Chucky right now, because the fact that you had none of the things that everyone thinks you need to succeed in business. You didn't have a landing page, no LLC, nothing. You're going to pay through Venmo. <laughs> you didn't have a name. And you're just, you made $100,000 in 48 hours, which is just yeah a testament to how you do business. It's instead yeah. of getting a solution and then trying to find people with that problem, find the problem and then make a solution and then Find those people, find your people, find your target avatar. And if you build the product with them in mind, instead of build the product and then try to find those people, it's so much easier to make money and have a successful business. I, I love that it you take that approach. It makes sure it's an expensive problem. Like most of your, most of your thought should not be into what's the domain you can buy. Most of your thought should be what problem am I solving? The problem that you solve is the make or break of your business. If you solve the correct problem and you hit the correct trend, you can catch a wave, even if you're a lackluster entrepreneur. And you see that a lot. A lot of the wins that you see are just simply because people pivoted into the momentum. They, they rode a wave. And right now, the wave after COVID, you have a lot of people that were remote. They got screwed over by their companies. Now they're having to go back into office. A lot of people had time to pause and reflect about what they actually wanted in life. And now a lot of people are waking up kind of from the matrix. And so I was like, what a cool problem to solve. And specifically that problem for that six figure earner, because that person has a different problem. Like we don't help people buy their first rental property. I hate that actually. It's my least favorite thing to do in the world. If you guys are buying your first rental, please keep listening to the show. Talk to Cody, talk to some of the other people, not me. Um, if you got like four <laughs> properties or 10 properties or 20 properties and like the person I just spoke with and you're like, hey, I'm already doing the thing. I don't need you to motivate me. I just need strategy and get out of my way. I just don't know what I don't know. And just show me the way and like, let's move. That's my freaking person because that's who I was. I was already doing it. I read the books. I listened to the podcast. I took advantage of free resources, which is all you need to get started. You do not need to pay anyone anything to get started. Get started for free. Cody has his podcast. I have my podcast. The book's 15 bucks. Do that first. And then when it's time to scale and you want to buy like 100 houses a year or buy businesses or buy, get that $10,000 a month of cash flow, that's our jam. So it's like you have to know who you help with specifically. The more specific mm. you get, the better. The riches are in the niches. So you've done over a thousand intro calls. I think that's what you said at this point. You have yep. almost 300 paid members in your community. In your book, you go through different psychologies. You have like the psychology of change, you have money, vision, goal setting, relationships. After going through a thousand calls, I'm guessing, I think you said, you see themes. You see three or four problems that people keep facing over and over again. I don't know if you want to relate it to maybe one of those psychologies, but what are some big blockers that these, you know, you just described your ideal avatar making over $80,000 a year. They're already motivated. They're already doing this stuff. Where are they getting hung up? Like, where are the obstacles that you're finding? Yeah. So, I mean, it's literally the book. So what we did was we took, you know, all the problems. We made it this $1,500 online course. And then we took the online course. And I literally took the modules of the online course. And those were the chapters of the book. So it's like we condensed everything. So the, the main issues that people run into um, are lack of community, lack of capital, and lack of confidence. And lack of vision, lack of clarity. Clarity, community, capital, confidence, the four C's, the four horsemen, right? So first off, let's start with clarity, lack of clarity. Biggest problem people have is you don't know where the hell you're going. Does not matter what you're doing, what money you're making, if you're doing, if you're slinging Etsy products and printables like Cody is, if you're doing multifamily, Airbnb, self-storage, buying businesses, if you do not know where you're going and what you're optimizing for, you will fail. Because it's like this entrepreneurship car dealership that I talk about in the, in the book where it's like we're only focused on the vehicles and we pick the vehicle and then we start driving down this endless highway. We have no idea where we're going. And then finally, the car starts to break down because we never set the GPS and actually figured out where we were heading towards. So clarity is the biggest issue. People don't know what they want. Um, number two would be uh, confidence. And then it would go to community and capital. The confidence because 
Number one, you're afraid of you losing your own money on the deal, which is why you don't do the deal. Problem number two, which is the real problem, is you're afraid of losing other people's money on the deal. That's really why you don't do the deal. So it's a confidence thing. And then there's also a whole, um, it's like an ego thing in the negative context because you don't feel like you've deserved, you deserve or you, you haven't earned the right to do the thing yet because you've in your mind subconsciously think that the bigger pocket stack method is the only way to do it. And if you don't do it and you bypass that, then you're, you're cheating. And I went through, I can speak from this perspective because I went through it. Like I was the guy saving my money up each and every year to buy a new house, save up my money, buy a new house. I, I lived that hell. <laughs> so I know where you're coming from. Um, so it's, it's a confidence thing, but the reality is that confidence is actually very easy to build. People are just are solving for it in the wrong way. So people are waiting for the confidence to take action. But the reality is that taking action is what builds confidence. So for people, we've, we've done this hundreds of times now. So we've learned very quickly that you can take somebody that has two rental properties, maybe two single family, and you put them in a room where you've got like 100 or 200 people buying multifamily. And they're buying 20 units, 40 units, 60 units, 100 units all across the board. And first thing that happens is you become used to it. The commas and the zeros start, stop being scary and they become normal. First thing we want to do is we want to normalize those numbers, right? So the second thing is, um, you just don't know what a good deal looks like versus a bad deal. So now we get you underwriting. So you underwrite hundreds and hundreds of properties so that you get really good with the numbers, right? Because that is the underwriting in the buy is where all the problems are. It's not normally in the sell. It's in the acquisition, not the disposition. So let's get you actually working with people that have done the thing that have hundreds and thousands of units where you're like, okay, let's work together and let me underwrite these properties for you. And the same thing applies with anything, guys. So the first thing is, you know, get in the environment, get in the community. Um, this isn't a pitch for us. This is anything. Um, same thing with working out. Then you do the thing and you take the repeated actions over and over and over again. Then the next thing that we realized and we recognized is um, you should not do your first deal by yourself because you don't know what you don't know. So if you've only gotten two, two doors, why would you go take down a 20 or a 30 unit by yourself? What you do is there's three people that need to be involved in a, in a real estate transaction or business transaction, the money, the knowledge, or the hustle. That's a brain and turnerism, right? So if you're not the capital, you could be the knowledge and the hustle. So for your first deal, what we do is we have a bunch of people that are like the experienced operators. They'll be the capital partners. They bring the money in and they say, hey, like, you don't know what you don't know. So I'll run point on this deal. I'll be the GP. Uh, you could take a minority position, you run it, you, you asset manage it, you're going to really get a hands-on experience. So we have a lot of people that are like a 30%, 40% equity owner in like 40 unit, 100 unit deals. And then you do it together. And then so that you have build confidence by doing and you build the balance sheet. And then after that, you now have the confidence and the reps and the skill sets and the equity in the game for you to go do a deal on your own and for you to beat the GP. So we've done this hundreds of times and it's a billion dollar problem that we're solving. And that's the best way we've solved for confidence. So there is nothing left outside of what I just said over the last three minutes that you guys need to build confidence. Last thing is community because you just, you need people that are holding you accountable and people that are where you want to be. So that's where that comes from. And then the last thing is um, the capital. So you'll realize, and that's just a, it's a mindset thing. You don't actually need capital. That's where all these other people come in. If you are really good at finding deals, underwriting deals, and getting deals under contract, you'll never need capital. You'll have other people that are ready, willing, and able to help you. So, you know, there we go. There's, there's about 10, 15 minutes of free coaching that will help people through literally every single roadblock that you guys need. And the best part is you don't need to pay me to learn this stuff. You don't need to pay Cody. If you want to do it fast, we'll help you. But you can learn all this free for, for free on YouTube and podcasts. It's all out there in the book. Absolutely. All right. So we dug into Soapbox the psychology off. piece. <laughs> Soapbox off. No, you crushed it, dude. That, that was awesome. That was super valuable. I really love how you break freedom into three levels. And I remember when I kind of first got into the whole financial independence, retire early, fire movement. The end of the road is financial freedom. That's where it stops. Mm -hmm. That's the end goal. You want to hit financial Ugh. freedom, then you sail off into the sunset. You drink your margaritas on the beach and you never work again. But that's not how life works. Nobody wants to actually completely stop doing anything at age 30. If you follow podcasts like ours, you start listening when you're in your 20s, like 
retiring by 30 is not that far fetched. And I think our listeners know that. So I want you to talk about, I want you to talk a little bit about the three levels of freedom and why you have financial freedom as level one. Cause many people would think, Oh, of course, financial freedom is level three. It's probably like an emergency fund. And then it's like coast Fi, and then financial freedom is the last one, but no, you have it as level one. And there's two levels beyond that. Correct. Yeah. Because, um, I don't know about you, man, but actually I do know about you because we talk every day, <laughs> yeah. but we, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of friends that have done the thing. Right. And so that's, what's yep. cool about all of this is it doesn't need to be scary. You're just making it scary, listeners, because you think it should be. The reality is this has all been done not hundreds of times, but thousands of times. Real estate's not new. You know, Etsy's a little newer, but there's been a bunch of people that have done the systems and proven the systems. You know, business has been around forever. Like all of this has been done and documented thousands of times. So other people have done it. You can do it. You're not trying to build the next freaking Facebook and be Zuckerberg, you know? It's just you're doing what you're supposed to do. Same thing when it comes to the three levels of freedom. So the first level is financial. Life begins when you hit financial freedom. It doesn't end. It begins. Because now you can figure out who the hell you are as a person. Because you've never taken the time to slow down and actually ask those questions. So a lot of the people that I talk to, the common denominator is the clarity thing. Nobody knows what they want and nobody knows who they are. So they don't really know what makes them happy. They don't really know if they're fulfilled. Um, they have a, a surface level understanding of it. Um, a lot of them, you know, they don't even know if they're happy in their relationship. I think that most of them are just kind of coasting by. So what happens when you hit financial freedom is now you get your time back, which is the second level of freedom, your time freedom. So I know a bunch of cats that are worth $20 million that can't just randomly take a Tuesday off. Are they free? Right? So yeah. I know a lot of people like that, where just because, you know, they've got millions of dollars in the balance sheet, do they actually have say to do what they want when they want with who they want? And that's a trap that people fall into is they'll do the thing. And now all of a sudden they're addicted to the game of more. And this game of more is an infinite game that you can't stop playing. It's another hedonic treadmill that you can't stop running. And so time freedom is about intentionality and systems and leverage and working through other people. And it's hard because for the entirety of your life up to this point, um, you have worked off of other people's schedules for your entire life. Think about that. It's crazy to think about, but from the day you were born, other people were telling you where to be and when and when to be home. When you were playing with your friends in the, in the park to when you went to school, elementary, middle, and high school, to college, and then to your adult life when you're working your nine to five. Be here at 8.30, you leave at 5.30, then you come home, dinner at seven. Go to bed at 10, wake up, do it again. When it's just you, there's a whole other muscle that needs to be built of you learning how to build systems and processes and schedules for yourself. It's very difficult and it's a worthy pursuit. I'm just now a year and a half. Well, oh, dear God, dude, almost two years. Um, two years in, I'm starting to get it figured out, but it takes time. And then the third level is mental slash, emo slash emotional freedom. And that comes from a combination of financial and time freedom. Because now that you have financial freedom, you're not worried about bills. So you have less stress. You're more, more relaxed. You can go <sighs> and chill for a little bit, right? And then what comes from that is now you have your time freedom. So you have control of your schedule. So now you have margin. Capital, and that's the M word, margin. Because once you have margin, you can slow down and actually ask the questions that matter in life. Am I happy? What does happiness look like? You know, what impact do I want to leave on the world? Um, how do I be the best friend, the best husband, the best wife, the best mom, the best dad that I can be? Like, how do I impact other people at scale? You know, like, what does a perfect day look like for me? These types of questions that you get from walking in the woods with nothing to do. And that's the only way that you can get the answers is by having that time and slowing down. And then your brain goes into different brain waves. There's the whole science behind it. So once you're there, then you're at ultimate freedom. And I'll end this too with a story. I was sitting on a bench in Norway. It was a Tuesday and I wrote about this in my newsletter. It was a, it was Tuesday at like three o'clock in the afternoon. And I just went down and there was, it was a sunset in Norway. So it was like, it was like seven o'clock, eight o'clock in Norway, but three o'clock Eastern. And as I was sitting there, I was watching the sunset. 
I sat there for two hours. I had nothing to do, nowhere to go, nowhere to be, no one to talk to. I just sat there, not on my phone and just was still. And it was beautiful. Like you could hear the seagulls, you could see the waves. And there's like this chill breeze that's blowing on your face. And um, I just remember sitting there and I was like, everything in life only comes back to this. The ability to sit on a bench by a, by a bay in Norway on a Tuesday with nothing to do. Because I will go from this point, I'll build $10 million, $20 million, $50 million, $100 million, and I'll build up all these teams and all these systems and processes, and I'll replace myself again and again in these businesses, only to come back to the fact that I can come and have the freedom to sit on a bench on Norway a, a Tuesday to watch a sunset with nothing to do. <laughs> and <laughs> that was a cool moment for me. It's like the story of the Mexican fisherman, where it's like, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? Exactly what I'm doing today. And then that's the three levels of freedom. How do you think about balance and time management? Because I totally understand where you're coming from. And it is it's rough. It's a conundrum, right? It's someone with no money could sit on that, that bench. Someone with $50 million could sit on that bench. They're at completely different stages of life. But kind of what I was saying before, once people hit financial freedom at, let's say, age 30, they're not going to want to sit on that bench every day for the rest of their life, most likely. Some people Ooh. might be okay with that. I'm not. I'm... I'm pretty ambitious. I'd say most people have ambitions in some discipline. How do you balance the kind of ambitious side of you with the chill side of you? Like you don't want to be working 24 seven, but you also don't want to be sitting on benches in Norway every day for the rest of your life. Like how, how have you personally struck a balance and feel, and feel good have, about it? I have the answer. You want the answer, okay. Cody? I want okay. it. You want the answer? Do the people, do the people <laughs> deserve the answer? Have they left a five-star rating and a review for your podcast, <laughs> The Financial Independence Show? The, the number one premium show for financial independence seekers? Um, so there's one answer. And I validated it over and over and over again um, across so many people. I validated this theory from millionaires to 100 millionaires to billionaires. And it seems to be the only answer to the problem which is you have to go in seasons, have to go in seasons. You're not going to get rid of it. It's never going to happen, but variety is the spice of life. So it's these two seasons that you pivot back and forth between called navigation and acceleration. So navigation is the period of time where you rest and you celebrate, which is the C word that none of us want to say, ironically. Because I'm we're all next thing, <laughs> yeah. next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. I hit yep. a million, now 10 million, now 5 million. And then it never ends. So that time to celebrate and the time to enjoy. So every time I set, I do it in both ways. So if I have a trip like this summer, I want to go back to Europe for the summer. So therefore, I need to do something ridiculously difficult between now and that June so that I can earn Europe. And I can earn that navigation for that to take off basically June, July, August again, like I did this last year. I went all around Europe. It was super fun. Um, on the flip side of that, when you, when you book your goal, you also need to book an equally large um, celebration ahead of time. So for me, it sounds so stupid and materialistic, but please take it with a grain of salt. Um, I want a Rolex. I've been able to afford a Rolex for the longest time. But I can't bring myself to pay $20,000 for a freaking watch. But, you know, I've attached this to my goal of hitting that million revenue um, and then hitting that million uh, podcast downloads. So I started that, you know, I set that goal when I started the business, when I started the podcast. And I'm about to hit both. So it's just like, for me, you know, having that, I'll be able because like, for me, I'm like, I don't need that. I'm going to put it back into the business. No, like. You do the thing and you do what you say. So for me, um, for the last Europe trip, I, was, I wrote the book and that was my hard thing to do to celebrate when I left. So navigation is that time where you're celebrating, you're relaxing, you're resting. Exce um, that's navigation. Acceleration is once you're crystal clear about what you need to do and you know what needs to be done and you go and ruthlessly execute. So what I do is I do a three to one ratio and that is what I found works best for me I recommend tinkering with this um, for other people. But for me, I, I find three months of acceleration, one month off. Three months of acceleration, one month off. Because I get done in that three months more than most people get done in a year. So I could do in three months what most people do in three years. And I, I go really hard obsessively. 
then I take a month off. And so that is the best thing that I have found to balance between the two, because it's, if you just sprint 24 seven, you're just going to burn out like that car we talked about on the highway before. So you need to pull over and go to the rest stops and it's good for your mental, emotional, physical, spiritual health. Like otherwise none of that exists. And so I'm going to do that the rest of my life is that three, three on one off method. I love that answer. You know what I love about interviewing you, Brian? I remember last time I was like, wow, that was a really great interview. Like Brian just got it. And I think you've progressed so much in a year. Like you've, you're a fantastic podcast. We're going to give it to you. You have a framework <laughs> Thanks, or a story for every single question I've had so far. And some of these Correct. are just like kind of off the cuff unplanned. And you just come back with some framework and some example. I'm just, just uh, giving credit where credit is due. I want to dive into that time management because you just said I can do more in three months than the average person can do in a year. And I'm guessing that's not a Correct. mistake. You are a man who knows how to get how to get the right inputs in the right amount of time. I know before we were recording this, we we're talking about getting ready for the summer. You're like, dude, I'm gonna do a 48 hour water fast. I'm gonna get shredded in 12 weeks. I'm gonna hire a trainer. Like, you know the inputs to get the result you want to get. How do you keep yourself mm -hmm. on track and how do you make sure that you have the right inputs in the first place? Well, the right inputs, that's another, you know, thing. That's the capital H how that people get stuck at. So it's very simple. Um, People get so stuck at this for years and years and years. You just go to the person that has got the result and you say, what did you do? <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's it's how so you... simple. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, how did we establish our multifamily buying framework for Action Academy? We asked a hundred of the people that are buying multifamily in Action Academy that were successful what their framework was. And so we're like, if you call this many brokers per week and you underwrite this many deals, you send this many offers statistically this percent will call back statistically this percent will say yes you know how many how many capital partners should you network with per week you should do this like oh, I, I did three then i upped it to five and then i was good right so it's just like you don't need to do trial and error it's already been trialed and errored baby like just do it <laughs> same thing with say okay go find somebody that's ripped like all right what'd you do like <laughs> You know, it's very simple calories in versus calories out. It's just being consistent with it. So the way that you're consistent with it is you share, you publicly document what you're trying to do. So for me, learning Spanish has been a bitch because I can't tie it to my, um, I can't tie it to my business goals, but I don't do it because it's not mission critical. Right. And <laughs> yeah. for people that maybe aren't on the other side of the fence yet, they don't understand that, but when you're all you're focused on is the business and you keep your one thing, your one thing, it's very difficult to, to bring in other hard things. But I look at like guys like Joe Rogan, I really admire him just because he's achieved mastery in all these different things, specifically very hard and difficult things. Like he's multi-time black belt in jujitsu and archery and all this different stuff, dude. It's so cool. And I'm like, dude, there's more to life than just my business. I need to like, so Spanish is important to me. So I document it and I share it and then I immerse myself and I immediately um, change my environment and change my structure and my routine to support and allow for that. Because there's a quote in Atomic Habits by James Clear where he goes, people rise to the level of their, of their goals and they fall to the level of their systems and standards. So it's all about the accountability systems and what you have in place. So for Spanish, to use that as a specific instance, um, I just moved to Colombia for a month and I was in Colombia for a month, forcing myself to speak Spanish every day. Like there was not a way for me to not speak Spanish. So I had to learn really conversational Spanish really fast. And now after that, one of my buddies, uh, Jesse, him and I are now doing Spanish classes together. And so he'll text me um, every Sunday and I'll say, I did four hours this week. What'd you do? And so you need that. That doesn't go away, by the way, if you're like worth 20 million. I've got guys worth 100 million that still do that with their buddies. It, it still exists. It doesn't, this, you can't earn your way out of this. It's just like now they're like, oh, you know, my con we just did 10 million this month. What'd you do? I, I did 12. Oh, okay. Well, I suck. Let me pick it up. <laughs> accountability. Oh, man. <laughs> it is accountability. No, it, it seriously always comes back to that. We, I, we do that. All of us do yeah. that. We yeah, do that yeah, in our group all chat. The time. You know, you'll be you'll be like, oh, I did four hundred. I'll be like, ah, oh, I just I did did like two hundred this month. Brandon will be, ah, like, oh, I did four hundred this month. I'm like, and we're, none of us are angry at each other. I'm like, dude, that's sick. I'm like, all right, no, cool. yeah, new playing field. <laughs> we uh, I mean, we got a little bit of a, a tiff. Not me and you, me and some of the other people in there, because 
I think it's friendly competition. It's kind of like the four minute mile. That's what I like to equate it to. Nobody had broken the four minute mile. And then the year someone does a four minute mile, like eight other people do it after them because they saw it was possible. Yeah. So like, that's why I like our group so much because you see someone do something incredible and you're right. You're not mad at them. You're not upset, but there's a little, little motivational jolt inside of you. You're like, okay, if this person did it, like it's, it's possible. I can do it too. So I, I love that. I think community is so, so important if you want to level up. Dude, money isn't even real. Like, this is all just a giant <laughs> game. It's a giant game of Monopoly. Like, people, like, you guys really need to understand that. And I have the perspective to speak on this because it took me two years of blood, sweat, and tears in corporate America to learn how to make $100,000 in uh, a year. You know, and that was a big deal to make $100,000 in a year. Then I figured out how to make $100,000 in a quarter. Now, it wasn't my average, but I did it. I pulled it out. And now this last December was the first time I made $100,000 in a month. And I was just like, and you guys witnessed that firsthand. I was like, guys, I did it. Just pulled it off. $100,000 yeah. this month. And it's ridiculous. And I did that with less energy and effort and way more fun than I could have imagined three years ago. So, I mean, and that's just in three years, man. Like, imagine this at scale at 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 30 years from now, dude. Like, what are you, 26, 25? 27. 27. All right, oops. <laughs> so, <laughs> dude, 30 years from now, you're only 57. Like, <laughs> right, yeah. 30 years from now, I'm 59, which is still in the game, dude. Like, 100%. 30 years. And then we'll be thinking back to this, and we'll say, oh, my God. You know, I did $5 million this month. God, that sucked. <laughs> and so it's all... <laughs> It's all perspective. And this sounds so privileged for some people that are listening to this that may be struggling in their jobs. But I'm just telling you, you are already comp competent and capable enough to do the exact same thing that we're talking about. You're just playing the wrong games and you just don't believe in yourself. That's it. Love that. Yet. Yet. <laughs> so I saw, I think it was a tweet or maybe it was on Instagram from Cody Sanchez. If you don't know who she is, she's just like a super intelligent go-getter businesswoman. She rocks. And it was something like, I don't want passive income. I want an effing empire. And so let's pivot <laughs> yeah. and talk about this bad boy from passive to passionate income. Because I think most people listening, myself included a couple of years ago, all I cared about was passive income. You want enough passive sure. income, to cover your expenses. That's how you reach FI. If, you, you know, if you're spending 5000 a month, you have 10000 a month coming into passive income, you're good. You're set. But you took it one step farther. Like Passive income is not the be all end all. You took it one step farther to passionate income. So we can talk a little mm -hmm. bit about what that transition is like and what passionate income even means. Yeah, so passionate income is getting paid to do what you would already happily do for free. So an example I use in the book is Steve Irwin, a crocodile hunter. So yep. type of dude that just like every single day he woke up on fire, you know, because we all have this, we all have the zones of genius, every single one of us. That's why there's not a single person that you can't learn something from. Um, I geek out over people's passions and, you know, Sometimes it's hard to identify what that is. But if you think back to when you were a kid, a lot of the times you can discover it. And then people just hammered and stamped you back into place. Um, and you were a square peg and they filed the edges off so that you could fit in the round hole. And so it's just a rediscovery process more than a discovery process. It's a rediscovery process of what do you actually enjoy doing? And now the passion is like the Japanese call it your ikigai. It's the intersection of what you're great at, what the world needs, what the market wants, and what you can get paid for. So in between is your ikigai, which is the translation of meaning of life. Um, so passionate income comes after the passive income. So the book says, you know, that passive income has been the primary focus, but it's only a tool, like a shovel that you use to dig a hole in the ground, right? And then you plant the seeds that sprout the passionate income, and then that's where the game begins. So there's so many different ways to do it. Um, but for me, it's just like, same as you, Cody, like we're already good. And ironically, I sold off all my assets that were producing the passive income, air quotes, that I had. I sold my real estate so I could focus purely on Action Academy. Um, and I actually shut my podcast affiliates down. I don't have affiliates besides Action Academy for the Action Academy podcast. So I was making like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a month from you know other masterminds and coaches that I was using, and now people offer me six figures to advertise on my show. And I say no, and they're like, "You gotta be kidding me! You gotta be crazy!" I'm like, "No, dude, like I already make that myself. I don't need like your thing. I'm good." And plus, you know, 
I would rather just focus on this. So it's like now I just put all my eggs back into one basket and I watch the hell out of that basket because people hear about this whole seven streams of income thing that millionaires have. It's bullshit. Uh, it's one at a time. You build one at a time. And there's a chapter in the book that's called Plant Trees, Manage Orchards. And it's the best wealth building framework I've ever gotten. It's from one of my uh, mentors that lives down the street from me here in Austin, Texas, David Osborne. He's worth $160 million. So when you first get an investment, you buy a house, you start a business, you do anything, you know, it's like planting a seed into the ground. And that seed's going to sprout up and, and produce you a fruit bearing tree. But it takes time to do that, right? So if you go and you're constantly planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds, but you're not tending the trees when they're young and they're saplings, like, the bad weather or animals can take them out. So that can be, you know, bad tenants, bad managers, bad economic environments. But what you need to do is protect that sapling until it grows into a strong, sturdy tree that produces fruit and it's fruit bearing. So what you do is you plant a tree at a time and you manage it, you watch it, and then you make sure that it's able to stand on its own. And then you go to the next tree and then you make sure it's able to stand on its own. And then you go to the next tree. Then eventually after that period, you have enough trees that are sturdy and producing fruit that you hire somebody else to come and manage the entire orchard for you. And then that is the best wealth building framework that exists because people may hear that and be like, well, how do you scale and leverage that? A tree doesn't necessarily need to be one rental property. A tree for me is Action Academy Community, which will be a $10 million a year business within the next two or three years. Like that's $10 million a year. So, I mean, that could be valued at like a, a 20 to $50 million valuation if we do it right, which that's a whole other intricacy that we can get into on another podcast that I don't think is probably up y'all's alley right now. Um, so it's like that is one tree that I have to manage and nothing else exists. Is I make sure that this business is on its own. And then once it's sturdy enough and I have a CEO, I have people in there that are managing the thing without me. I move on to the next asset in the next wealth building vehicle, which for me, I'll probably dump a couple million dollars into commercial real estate um, and ride the upswing back after this tra uh, like this crash and this uh, trough that we're going through right now. And then that will be the next kind of wealth building. Um, so if I were to make like call my shot publicly right now, I'm 29. I think by 31, then we'll have Action Academy completely managed. We're going to be doing probably 10 to 15 million a year at that point, just purely from the community and its subsidiaries. Um, at that point, I believe I'll also be buying other businesses. I'm already eyeballing a couple of businesses to buy, like small businesses. Um, I'll buy a couple of those. I'll get into the private equity game. Uh, by 35, I believe that we'll be up around the 20 million to 30 million equity mark at 35 and by 40, I think we'll get up to about 50 plus. And that may be shooting low. But the kicker is, uh, the only reason I can say any of that, and for people that maybe don't know me, they can listen to this and be like, okay, dude, that's cute, like do whatever. But like, you know, Cody, and it's just like, I know, it's like, when you're around enough people that have done that, it's, it's kind of an inevitability because you already know what to do and you already have the people in place. So it's just like, how do you, you know, how do you make a million dollars, right? There's two ways to make a million dollars, by the way. Way number one is to get in a bunch of rooms that have a bunch of millionaires. <laughs> way number one. Way number two is you help uh, 10 people make $100,000. <laughs> Like, and so I have a buddy, Ben Kenny, that taught that. He's like, okay, well, how do I become worth 10 million? I help other, I help 10 people become millionaires, you know? And so it just evolves that. It's just a game of scale and leverage and helping other people. Because if you help enough, other people get what they want, you can do anything. So I'm going to become fabulously wealthy helping other people become fabulously wealthy. And that's a super fun game to play where we can all like frolic in Mykonos or wherever. <laughs> like, <laughs> That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. I want to address the people who, they're, maybe they're planting their first tree. Let's tie, let's tie the tree yeah. analogy to Ikigai and something you kind of adapted Ikigai in your book to, I think it was called the Side Hustle Blueprint, kind yeah. of identifying how you can best figure out what that passionate thing is and how you can monetize it. Just hoping you could maybe tie all those ideas together. And let's just talk about the first tree because I know you just kind of, um, you kind of just talked about your entire vision from now, now <laughs> until 40. You're talking guy. about the full orchard. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I love that, by the way. But I think a lot of people aren't quite there. So let's, let's talk about the first tree and figuring out the side hustle blueprint, Ikigai, and tying it all together. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, and it ties really well with what we talked about in the beginning of the podcast is documentation. So um, again, we start with the problems that we provide the solutions for them. So uh, you're not going to know, you're not going to receive market feedback unless you produce to market, right? So if you're just doing stuff quietly, you're not going to get any feedback. Feedback and data is king. It's king. That's why companies like Google and Amazon are, you know, running the world um, because they control the data. Whoever controls the data controls the cash. So you need to collect data. So what I would advise you to do, you don't need to be a content creator. You don't need to be making all these edited TikToks and doing dances and stuff. Simply post about what you're doing. Just say, hey, you know, um, I love... You, I love candles. I'm freaking obsessed with candles. I've been obsessed with candles for four years. Oh my God, Amy, I didn't even know you liked candles. And you just post on your stories about all these freaking candles you're making. And then you're like, oh my God. So I went and I studied like perfumery over here and I learned how to do this. And it's so interesting to me. And, you know, I just made this candle for myself. And then you make candles for your family and then you make candles for your friends. And they're like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. And you just document that. And other people will start DMing you and they'll say, hey, I want some of these candles. And you're like, okay, what candles do you want? What, what scents do you, would you like? And you start documenting it and asking questions. And then all of a sudden it's like, you, now it's about time you maybe have a candle company, you know? And so a lot of it is just putting it out there and everything that you're doing and then seeing what people respond to. And then when, when they respond, then that's going to give you market feedback about what you should pursue further. And then that's the... That's 80% of the side hustle blueprint is, is figuring that out. And then there's also an analogy we talk about, which is like the bear on the unicycle. So um, Naval, it's a Naval Ravikant quote where he talks about, you know, you have a bear, you have a unicycle. So you have a bear, and you're like, oh, that's interesting enough. It's a bear. I've seen a bear before. You see a unicycle, you're like, oh, that's interesting enough. I've seen a unicycle before. But you put that fucking bear on a unicycle, <laughs> you're like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So... You don't need one strength, but you need two strengths, two rare and valuable skills. And when you put these two rare and valuable skills together, you become a bear on a unicycle. And that's what you're looking for in your side hustle or your business. So for us, for Action Academy, um, passive income, rare and valuable skill, you heard about it before. Accountability, rare and valuable skill, heard about it before. But if you pair them together and you actually mean it and you're like, yo, if you're not doing anything in this group, we track what everyone does weekly. And if you're not doing anything, we're going to kick you out of the group and then give you a prorated refund. Thank you. Come again. Bye. Everyone's <laughs> like, wait, what? That's different. I've never heard of that before. Don't you care about profit? I'm like, dude, I don't need your money. This is passionate income, baby. <laughs> and so that's where it all ties in. And people are like, we've kicked people out six months in where I'm like, dude, you haven't shown up to a single call. You're not in your pod. You haven't posted on the page in four months. You know, we've texted you to ask what's going on and you didn't reply. Why are you taking up a spot that could be used by somebody else? And, you know, we're, by, we're four high performers by high performers. So that's our bear in a unicycle analogy, like in real practice. Well, I think this is a perfect place to bring this episode to a close. You're clearly passionate about this stuff. So where do you want to Dabble. direct people, Brian? Where can people <laughs> learn more? Get the book, all that good stuff. Turn their turn their ambitions into reality. Turn passive income into passionate income eventually. Yeah, guys. Um, so if it's your jam and you're still listening to this, that means you're kind of crazy. So congrats <laughs> for being crazy. Um, if you want the step-by-step -step playbook, like we literally gave away most of the book here, but if you want it way more in depth and detail and like roadmaps and systems and frameworks, um, check out the book from Passive to Passionate, How to Quit Your Job, Grow Your Wealth, Turn Your Passions into Profits. It's only on Amazon. Um, I'm working on the audio book right now, so you can go check that out. Uh, if you like what we talked about today, I talk into a microphone every single day for the last two and a half years. Um, I've done my podcast, The Action Academy, across 35 different countries. I'd go check that out. And 99% of you uh, will stop there. That will all already give you everything that you already need for free or close to it. Um, if you're the 1% that are like, hey, you know, I'm exactly who you spoke with. Like, I'm fired up right now. I want to, you know, like, go and actually join the community. I recommend getting the book first, listening to some podcast episodes for free. And then by doing that, you'll have direct access to the community. But I want you to listen to some stuff for free first. Please and thank you. So that's me. <laughs> Sounds good, man. One heck of a pitch. Listen to his free stuff first. And then if you like what, what Brian's got and what he's offering, then you guys can hop into Action Academy. But thank you, dude. You this is seriously awesome. It's 
insane to see how fast you progressed. And I love how you do things differently because there's not many other entrepreneurs like you who are building in public. I see you literally share your revenue stats in Action Academy with the people who paid you. Like they're part of the revenue and you're sharing yeah. all of the stats. It's like, it's just so different from how the weird. traditional person approaches <laughs> business. But I think people love it. They love the honesty. That community is popping off. I'm always getting notifications on my phone when I log into Facebook. So you're doing something right, man. And appreciate you sharing the wisdom today. Man, thanks for having me on. It's been awesome. Thanks, guys. Five-star rating and review for Cody. <laughs>